Hey, what's up guys? We're going to be talking about privilege escalation. So the idea here is that we've gained access to a Linux box, but the issue is that we are not a root user. So we don't have full control over the system. So the idea behind the term privilege escalation is that we want to take our regular user account and somehow get access to a root shell. And at that point, we're just going to have complete control over the system. So let's see an example of how this might be done. Okay, so we're here with our user shell. And one of the first things that we're looking for is a binary that runs as root. Now we know we don't have root access at this stage, but sometimes there are binaries that can run as root, even though we don't have root access. And to see the binaries that are available to be run as root, one of the commands we can use is sudo hyphen L. We'll enter our password for the user account here. And we see that we don't have the ability to run sudo. Okay, no problem. There might still be a way of finding a binary that we can run as root. So let's make use of the ID command. And we see the groups that we are a member of. And in particular, we're going to focus on that last group bug tracker. So because we are a member of the bug tracker group, we can also run binaries that are associated with that bug tracker group. So let's see if we can find the binaries that belong to the bug tracker group. And we're going to make use of the Linux find command. We'll use hyphen group bug tracker. And we want to specify that we're searching the root directory. And finally, just so we don't get bombarded with errors here, we are going to redirect errors to the dev null output. We get a match there. There is a binary in USR bin bug tracker. So let's head to that directory and let's explore this particular binary. So if we type LSAL, in fact, we're going to be more specific there, LSAL bug tracker. So we see it's owned by root, but it belongs to the bug tracker group. Also, if you notice the file permissions over on the left hand side, so we have read, write, and execute for the owner, the group, and for others. At least in most cases, we have read, write, and execute. If we have a look at the Linux permissions there, we have read, write, and then we have an S. So instead of execute, we have S. Now that S refers to the set UID bit being enabled. And what that means is that this binary will always run as the file owner. And in this case, we can clearly see that the file owner is root. In other words, this is exactly what we're looking for. This is a binary which will execute as root. So even though we are not a root user, we can run a program as root. And often we find there might be a way to manipulate such a binary that runs as root into giving us full root access, something like a root shell, for example. We can also find a bit more information about the file if we type file bug tracker. And we can see very clearly the set UID has been enabled on this binary. Okay, let's scope out this binary. What exactly does it do? Let's just run bug tracker. So it's asking us to provide a bug ID. Okay, let's just give it the value one. We don't really know what this binary does yet. Let's see if we can find out what it does. So we get what looks to be a bug report. Okay, let's rerun the binary. Let's try ID two. We get another bug report. So it seems fairly self-explanatory. We run the binary, we give it a bug report number. We see the associated bug report. Okay, what happens if we give it a value for a report that possibly doesn't exist? For example, bug report with the ID 100. Okay, now we get an error message and we get some more information regarding what this binary is doing behind the scenes. So we can see it's calling cat and cat just echoes the contents of a file to the screen. It's calling cat in the roots report directory. And you can see it's trying to call cat on a file with the name that matches the number of the bug report. So it's calling cat 100 in that root reports directory. Now we notice straight away that cat is not called with an absolute path. So what we mean is instead of USR bin cat, it's just cat. So one of the logical questions here is when we don't have the full path of a binary, for example, user bin bug tracker or user bin cat, 
How does the Linux operating system know which binary to call? And the answer is it looks at our path bash variable. And we can see what that looks like if we type echo path. This is a bash variable that informs our system of the location of all of our binaries. So we have several different directories there. And the idea is when we make use of a command like cat, for example, I could use cat right now, and I haven't specified the precise or absolute path for that binary. But Linux is intelligent. It has this path variable and it looks in each of these directories, one after the other, trying to find this cat binary. So it looks in user local sbin, if it doesn't find it there, it looks in user local bin, and eventually it finds a directory with the binary, it then calls the binary from that directory. So this is the function of the path variable in Linux. Now, because cat is not called with an absolute path, we can probably make our own version of cat that does something different to the default version of cat. Let's take a look at how this works. So we're going to cd into the temp directory and we're going to create a file called cat. So this is going to be our fake cat binary. So normally cat is going to echo the contents of a file to the screen, whereas our fake version of cat is actually going to give us a shell. So let's vim into cat. And it's fairly straightforward to get a shell. It's just forward slash bin forward slash sh. Let's write and quit that to the file. So if we type cat cat now, we get the contents of that file called cat. Now we can't execute cat yet because it doesn't have the permissions. So we can enable those permissions with chmod plus x cat. So now when we have a look at cat in our directory, we can see the x is marked. We have rwx for execute. So if we type cat cat, it just uses the regular version of cat and echoes the contents of our cat file to the screen. But if we specify the directory, so the current directory and run cat cat, well, we get a shell now in this case. So it's executing the contents of our fake cat binary. Now this is not quite the shell we're looking for because this is still a regular user shell, but you can see the functionality of our fake cat binary. Once it's executed, it returns a shell. So the idea here is if we can get bug tracker, which runs as root to execute our fake version of cat, we're going to get a shell, but it's going to be a root shell. So just backtracking slightly, how does Linux know which version of cat to call? Well, remember it traverses each of those directories in the path one at a time until it finds the binary with the name of the binary that it's looking for. So we can modify our path so that the first directory our system looks in for the cat binary is our temp directory, which has the fake cat binary in that we've just created. So the next question is, how do we modify our path? Let's just echo our path to the screen again so you can see the structure of it. We have a list of directories and they are broken up by colons. So that delineates the list and separates the directories. So we can make use of the command export path equals and we want to add our TMP directory, but we then want to append the rest of the list. We don't want to overwrite our path variable so that it's just TMP. We simply want to prepend TMP to the beginning of the list. So we can now append to our command the original path variable. So what we'll get here is our entire path as is, but we have prepended the TMP directory to our path. So just to confirm that's what's happened, let's echo path to the screen. And now we see a copy of our path but we see the TMP directory prepended to that path. Now, just for a bit of fun, if we type cat, well, it's no longer going to work as we would expect. So if we try and cat the contents of any file to the screen, it's not going to work by default. In fact, if we run cat on its own, we just get a shell because remember, that's what our fake cat binary does. It returns a shell, but of course, it's still a regular user shell at this stage. Okay, so the next step is to get bug tracker to execute the fake version of cat. And of course, since bug tracker runs as root, it has that set UID bit enabled. 
we will get a root shell back as a result. So let's run USR bin bug tracker. It's asking us for a report value. And what will happen now if I type 100, it's going to try and cat the contents of the 100 bug report to the screen. But of course, instead of calling the real cat, it's going to call our fake cat, which returns a bash shell. So let's run this. We get a shell. Let's type, who am I? Now we have a root shell. So we've gained root access to the system. This is now a full system takeover because we have admin access. So we've started with a regular user shell. We had limited access to a system that we shouldn't have had access to. Now we have full access because we have a root shell. This is referred to as privilege escalation. And it all started with us looking for a binary that runs as root, which we were then able to exploit, which then results in the privilege escalation. Well, that's pretty much it. Hope you found it interesting, guys. Thanks very much for watching.